Hey, guess what? So, welcome to Tales Tomorrow. I am Maro, your storyteller for today, and with me I have some RPG horror stories. Also, anybody that is living on East Coast, I hope you survived the hurricanes over happening around. My area wasn't hit that bad, but you know what's a good thing? It is finally nice and cool. At least it's not as hot anymore, but it's just nice. And it's not 90-something degrees with high humidity anymore, and it's just, ah, oh, it's bliss. I feel so much better. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back to some more RPG horror stories and ruin that good feeling that we have. Ruined game table. Literally. This is an awful experience I had some years ago. A friend set up a Pathfinder game in her house with four players. Most of us came straight from work and hungry, so before starting, we ordered pizza. Game started normally after eating most of them and went well for about one and a half hours. Shortly after, one of the players bolts up and projectile vomits on a table. Right on the character sheets, dice, books, or some of us, everything. There was no warning, no complaint of feeling sick, nothing. After the initial shock, he started apologizing profusely and tried to clean up the mess frantically. The host was pissed as hell, not at the vomiter, at the incident, and just told us to let her clean up herself. We obliged and got her another book as an apology. We never had an issue like that, thankfully. I have a couple of short stories that I found that I think would be kind of nice, you know, be able to go through them together. And this one was, uh, I mean, very mild, but I mean, yeah, I guess it's a lesson of if you are feeling sick, you probably should tell somebody and don't project a vomit on your DM's table or their stuff. Definitely. Let's get to the next one. Dude, just roll the dice. I am not sugarcoating this, so no initials or characters. Friend had me sit in on their homebrew game a couple of days ago wanting my advice as a forever DM after watching the regular session. Cool plot, fun party of characters, but I had some meh vibes from a guy we'll call Josh, because that's his name. Josh was the only person to ask why I was sitting in, and I kept going, hmm, alright, like I was there for any reason beside watching the game. One of the other players read it differently, assuming he was implying me and my friend were a thing, despite them having a girlfriend, so he backpedaled hard and shut up for a while. The issue I had was that he seemed to roll weird. He wasn't hiding the rolls exactly, but like it seemed like his rolls only ever happened while something else was going on, and in combat heavy sessions I was noticing weirdly high inconsistent damage out of a barb who wasn't even at 16 strength. But as all things do, 3 hours in and all the third to last combat, people are content to sit quietly and wait for things to play out, but this guy needs to roll to hit and he keeps trying to strike up a combo about either the food to get after or bringing up a joke we beat the horse with an hour ago. Finally, everyone is like, dude, just roll already, Jesus fucking Christ. But like, jokingly, I'll be tired as hell. So imagine the dead silence when he finally rolls the dice in his little dice tray and is taking place where they land. Not moving once they hit the felt material. So me, being a bit tired and kinda miffed from earlier, swap up his dice and toss them in a tray thing, expecting a regular roll. The land, and stick in the same place again. This absolute loser brought a magnet bottom tray to what's essentially my friend's first campaign, and her big moment to tell a story with this new group of people. She mainly pulled from the game store they went to. After a lot of accusations, and talk about what a dick move that was, Josh left out and apparently left the store discord. I stayed out of it. Not my game, not my group. But seriously, what sort of a lame motherfucker had to ruin a homebrew game this way with someone they just met? And I'm more confused about how much money or time goes into getting a cheating tray when you can only use it for D&D games. I feel like the cost didn't equal the reward here, lol. Edit, his real name is something a lot longer or harder to spell, but I use Josh because that's what I called him in the messages after everyone went home. I would get mad, but you know what's hilarious? Josh spent money on a cheating tray and some cheating dice. He actually invested money on a cheating tray and cheating dice to cheat in a TTRPG, a board game of all things, in a TTRPG. Why would you spend money on that? You could have spent money on some pretty dice or maybe, I don't know, like a pretty figurine for your character, your favorite character or, I don't know, commission art for your character and make some beautiful memories, but instead, this guy spends money on cheating dice and cheating tray and a cheating setup for a TTRPG because he is afraid of getting lower rolls than a TTRPG. Low rolls are gonna happen regardless of who you are. 
regardless of what you do regardless of who you're fighting it's bad luck and it's uh, it just that's what it is <laughs> i can't tell if i'm mad or just i find it so amusing what a what a loser <laughs> what a loser i'm not happy that the person is cheating but man is it hilarious to find out this way <laughs> It's like, dude, just roll already. Rolls. Oh, landed perfectly on a per perfect spot. It didn't even roll anywhere else. That's a weird. I don't think I have to tell to any of you here, but if there's anybody that needs to hear this at any point at all, don't cheat on a TTRPG. Don't cheat in a game in general. You only ruin the fun for yourself. Sometimes it's fun to get low rolls. It's the drama. It's the fun. It's cheering for your party members whenever they're getting high rolls and uh, sulking together and feeling disappointed when all you get low rolls and stuff. Anyway, I'm going to get to the next story. You know what I mean. Don't cheat. Locked in a cage for an entire session. So it's been a while since this. I didn't really want to post about it before because I felt bad for the first time DM, but I figured it's been long enough. So I met some people on Reddit for D&D. I like making ridiculous characters, so I make a lizard man barbarian. I eat people. It's a funny gag. Can't remember how much of the game now, but part that basically ruined the entire game was our rogue. Most players were first timers, including the DM, so I tried to be helpful when I could. But this freaking rogue, she was obsessive with preparations. Took literal hours just to decide on what equipment to buy between rope or caltrops. At every single freaking decision, she would invent a reason to delay the game, like it was on purpose. There was a point where we had to cross a bridge with a scary looking black knight. We figured it'd be best to avoid it, so I suggest we just swim across. I'm a lizard and I swim good. I offered to ferry them across, but the rogue says she doesn't want to get wet. Fine. I offered to swim across and tie a rope between two trees so they can shimmy across. Nope, can't get my shorts wet, says the rogue. We spend the next half hour trying to figure out a way to fly the rogue across the river on a silver chariot until I decide to barbarian. I'll admit my fault in this, but I wanted to play the freaking game. I developed a habit that any time the rogue made a fuss, I would charge the enemy because I was no longer willing to put up with waiting for a 100% optimal solution. Now you see, the OP here is doing kind of the opposite of what the rogue is doing. With the rogue is over planning, the OP here is just kind of charging ahead without waiting for anybody else. And you shouldn't make the entire party wait to plan out everything 100% optimally, but also you shouldn't charge in without anybody being prepared or ready for it whatsoever. Two wrongs don't make a right, so I'm glad the OP admitted the fault in this. Let's continue. I talked to the DM about it. I suggested he be more aggressive in making progress. He didn't do anything about her, but he did punish me. I missed a session, and apparently the team decided to use me as a sacrifice to get into a bandit camp. When I started next session, I was in prison. The bars were unbreakable, according to DM. Try to intimidate my way out, break my way out, etc. The DM tells me it's impossible. Hours later, near our game time limit, after the team begins the fight to deal with the bandits, suddenly the bars to my cage just fall off. They were totally loose the whole time. I may have deserved a timeout, but you know, talking to each other like adults would probably have helped more. Needless to say, I dropped immediately after this. I'm not gonna play with people who waste my time like that. Okay, but let's be fair, okay? Alternatively, you also kind of wasted other people's time. You kind of rushed other people as well. You don't just make, you, two wrongs don't make a right. You can't just be like, oh, this player's taking forever to make a plan and stuff. Maybe the other players were okay with it. Maybe they did want to participate in it. We're not getting much of context about the other players being involved. Or maybe the DM was encouraging a more thoughtful kind of game. You shouldn't slow down games, but you also shouldn't just rush in like an idiot without a plan. I mean, that's just stupid because nobody else is prepared. And listen, I'm only saying that from my own personal experience. I've played with people that play the character like they're supposed to rush into battle without any sense at all, any thought whatsoever. And guess what happens? Player characters die, or basically die. And then me and the rest of the players have to be the ones to clean up the back or try to hopefully recover from the situation. And it's the most stressful, annoying thing to deal with. Don't be a dick to other people at your table. Respect the time, they respect yours. If somebody doesn't respect the time, you don't go the opposite and be like, okay, you're slowing down, I'm gonna rush ahead. You talk to the DM first. Or talk to the player first, be like, hey, listen, could we maybe hurry up? Is there any way we can make it go a little faster so we can keep good pace? If it doesn't work with the player, ask the DM. We're missing a lot of context from here, but I'm assuming if you are in a cage, either A, you did something on a side that made you deserve to be in a cage for whatever reason, or B, the DM was being spiteful because, I don't know. 
I feel like the story is missing a lot of context, but either way, the lesson from here is two wrongs don't make a right. Though I do appreciate the OP admitting the fault and saying that, you know, they probably should have done things a little bit better. It's a lesson for the future for everybody. And with that, that's going to be all our stories for today. I want to thank you very much for watching and thank you so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.